Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a software tutorial, this time though using Minitab as our software of choice. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and welcome to another mini tab tutorial uh, today we're going to do a follow-on from a previous uh, mini tab tutorial where i set up a doe so i set up a, a, a full factorial with three factors time temperature and pressure we've got the uh, the data here you can see we've got five replicates at each row i've set the data up in a table uh, because it's much easier to see that way what's going on you can look across the row and you can make sure that all the numbers are nice and consistent. You can also check for typos. Uh, so if you're looking at this and you've inadvertently dropped a zero in the wrong place or missed a, uh, a number out, then it's much easier to see when you've got it as a table. And because I've got it as a table, what I've then done is I've summarized up on the end and I've calculated an average for the five replicates I've calculated a standard deviation for the five replicates. And these are the two columns that we're actually going to use to create a model uh, and to use to predict, etc. So we've got it set up in that way. And by the way, just to check for a typo, if you look at the, um, the S column at the end there, that's the easy way to check for a typo. So I'm just looking at that column. They're all of a similar size, twos, threes, and fours, etc. So we know that we haven't messed up. If you, if you had one that was 48 or something, you'd be able to say, wait a moment, let me look across the row. Have I made a type in error? Some of the biggest problems I've, I've had analyzing a DOE where I couldn't get it to, to work properly were because we dropped a typo into the data set. We couldn't see the typo. Um, in the data set and um, it took us hours and hours of analysis before we spotted it so save yourself some time and some grief check the s on the right hand side and if you see something that looks a little bit odd check your data make sure it's okay so now we're ready to do some analysis so we're going to go stat doe factorial and we're going to go analyze factorial design We've got to put the responses in there. So you can see that Y bar and S is already sitting in there. Normally this would be empty. Let me just add them in. Look, so what we'd normally do is we'd add them in like that. Then having put the responses in, I'm going to click on the terms. And you can see here, look, I've taken the three way away. So you can see that normally this would be a full factorial the three-way would have been in there. It would have been analyzing everything. But because I'm analyzing a summarized column of statistics, I don't have enough degrees of freedom to do that. So I'm going to take one term away. The term I take away is the thing that's least likely to actually be important, which is the, um, in this case, it's a three-way. If I got four factors, I'd take the four-way out. If I got five factors, I'd take the five-way out. Threes, fours, and five factors in physics are very rare. And now this allows me to have enough degrees of freedom to do the analysis. Click OK to that. Graphs. Main graph I want is the Pareto. So click OK to that. What else have we got here? Let's click the options and have a look. Is there anything in the options that I want to do? No, I don't want any transformation, so nothing to see here. Uh, and then let's have a look. What else have we got? Results. What results do I want? Now, normally all of these are switched on, and I've switched off. I've switched off the method. I've switched off the analysis of variance. I've switched off the regression equation and the aliens in structure. And I just want to see the model summary 
and I want to see the coefficients. This is going to give me p-values, etc., on which I can make some uh, decisions. Click OK, and now I'm ready to click OK. OK, so now up on the left-hand side here, look, you can see I've got two sets of analysis, the Y hat and the S hat. So let me take a look at the S hat first. I always take a look at the S first, most important when you're doing Six Sigma, especially standard deviation is most important. Now you can see here that none of these terms cross this, this red line for us. So what it's basically telling us, none of these terms are important here. And if you look at the p-values, look at the p-values here, all the p-values are all very high. There is nothing in this model that's important. Therefore, the model isn't of any use to us in this case. And so, despite the fact that the R squared um, says 81%, um, um, none of the terms in the model are valid. Therefore, if I took them all away based on the p-value, the model would be empty. Nothing to see on the S hat. Let's go to the Y hat then. So now let's go down and just have a look at the diagram. Let me make a little bit more room here, It'll make it easier to see this. You can see, look, we've got some terms here that are very strong now, and they are basically saying they are likely to be influential, they're likely to be important, they are going to be significant in the model. And sure enough, look, time in this case, look at the p-value, it's going to go below 0.5 time is influential what else have we got pressure is influential you've also got the two-way time and temperature uh, interaction there which is very close to being significant so we are going to take some terms out of this model now uh, so that we can get it down to the point where we can predict we can ask it to hit a target so which terms do I want to take away? Well, I'm going to take away the time pressure interaction. Uh, I'm going to take away the temp pressure interaction. And I'm going to take away, let's have a look. I'm going to leave the time temperature in there. So I'm looking at the p-value. So I'm making a decision based on the p-value. So what I've got to do now, look, is go stat, DOE, factorial analyze factorial design I can take away the S in this case because we know we don't want it to analyze the S and then we need to say which which terms are we going to take away are we going to take away the uh, the AB and move that out of the way uh, are we going to take away the the AB the AC or the BC and as I remember, I'm going to take the time pressure away, which is the AC interaction. Let me take the AC out um, because it wasn't, wasn't strong enough. P-value was too high. I seem to remember I'm going to take the temperature pressure away, which is the BC interaction. That's got to go as well. Now I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to ask it to analyze again. So now look, I've got a new, I've got a new model. Uh, time, it's got a low p-value. Pressure has a low p-value. Um, but the time temperature interaction, that can go, that p-value, we can take it away. And at the same time, I can take the temperature away as well. So I'm going to take away the, the interaction plus B in this model. So I'm going to do this again. Stat. Analyze the factorial design. Terms. I can take the AB away. And now I can take temperature out as well. Click OK. And now we have the final model. So now we have the model, and we just have those two terms that we started with that we saw first of all. 
um, which was time and pressure. They're the only things left in the model. And now we're going to use this model to try to hit a target. So in order to do a confirmation run, uh, I'm going to try and hit some midpoint here. So let's have a look. I'm going to try and hit... I want to hit somewhere where I didn't go in the experiment. Normally what you'd do is you'd try and hit the center point. The confirmation point would be at the midpoints. So you'd want to put uh, time at seven and a half, temperature at 80, and pressure at 150, and confirm the midpoint. That would be a common way to do it. But I want to show you the, the optimizer. So I'm going to ask the optimizer to hit 95 using this model. So I'm going to go stat, DOE, factorial, and you can see response optimizer down here. And it says goal. We don't need to optimize S. Now the goal here for Y, we're going to ask it to hit a target, and I'm going to ask it to hit a target of 95. Let's have a look if there's anything I, I need to do during the setup. So it's it's saying to me, I'm going to hit the target. What's the importance? Now, if I've got two outputs here, I could, of course, weight the, the output. And therefore, if it can't hit both outputs, I'd want it to hit one of them first and then compromise on the second one. So I can give it weighting. I can give it importance. I don't need that in this particular case so cancel that let's have a look at the results um okay don't need to change don't need to change any of that graphs i'm going to get an optimization plot yep that's okay view the model the model looks like that which it does that's okay so now i'm okay to just go yep let's do it Okay, so the response optimizer now, let's take a look at this. It's saying, if I put time to seven and a half, and I put pressure to 128, then I will hit 95 as predicted. And it gives me a confidence interval as well. So it tells me that I should be somewhere between these two figures so if i if i hit somewhere between those two figures what that's telling me is i've i've confirmed what would i do next what i would do next is go back to the machine dial those two settings in 7.5 and 128.3 and i would run some samples and i would see if i hit 95 and that would give me a confirmation run and that, folks, is how to do some basic analysis with a full factorial. Very simple, creating a model, reduce the model down using the p-values. And once you've got the model reduced down using the p-values and you have a proper statistically significant model, what do you do next? You ask it to hit a target, you go back to the machine, and you do a confirmation run. DOE, using Minitab, a full factorial with a an optimized analysis go and do a confirmation run okay well I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on that subject if you've got any questions about Minitab that you want me to help you with or indeed any questions about Six Sigma uh, at all or indeed lean please drop me a message either in the comments below Please subscribe also um, but you can also leave me an email if you send me an email on any question and you need a little bit of advice I'm more than happy to help you out and of course if you want me to come and help you inside your factory fix a technical problem please drop me a line I hope to hear from you soon